everyone and welcome to Anne's Family Recipe. Today I'm trying something totally new for me. I'm making homemade strawberry jam. I was just watching a video on the YouTube channel Farmhouse on Boone, which is a super aesthetically pleasing channel. I love watching it. I'll link it for you down below. But Lisa was making homemade strawberry jam. She shared a recipe and on her blog, there's a variation where you can actually can it. Today, I'm not gonna do that officially. I am gonna put it into jelly jars, but I'm not going to do the water bath where it will preserve the jelly for like a year or two. This will just last in my fridge for about a month, which I'm sure we'll get through it by then. It looks delicious. This recipe is sweetened with honey. So I have fresh strawberries, the honey, and pectin, and I think I need some lemon juice too. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through my whole process today and we'll see how it turns out. Good morning, Claire. You can see Claire dressed appropriately for our activities this morning. Her little strawberry outfit. Hey, lady. So these are little ball jam jars that I bought just at Walmart, it was a four pack. I'm not quite sure how many jars this will make, maybe only two, but I'm gonna um, sterilize my jars just because I haven't cleaned them yet before. So I have a pot of water I'm gonna bring to a simmer and place the jars inside and let them simmer for a few minutes just so they're clean. And then over here I washed all of the lids and the little inserts in the lids just with hot soapy water. So that should be clean enough for what I'm doing here. I washed about two pounds of strawberries. So for this recipe, I'm looking for about four cups of strawberry puree. the strawberry puree into my Dutch oven. I'm going to bring this to a simmer and then add in the lemon juice, pectin, and honey. And then I'll let this simmer for a while, whisking it until it thickens up. The jam has been simmering now for about a half an hour and I've been whisking it periodically. So have the kids. I can definitely feel with my whisk that it is thickening up a little bit. And I think pretty soon I'm gonna take it off the heat and ladle it into my jars. Okay, so this did not go as planned. Um, I really thought that it would continue to thicken as it cooled down, but it definitely is not. It's still the same consistency it was when I ladled it out of the Dutch oven. I'm gonna put into a saucepan and heat up again and see if I can get it to thicken. I watched a few more videos on YouTube that were a little more specific with their instructions and 
Several people are saying that this is almost like a candy making process where I need to grab my candy thermometer and bring this to 220 degrees. Um, so I'm gonna try that out. I might even add a tiny bit more honey or sugar to it to see if that changes the consistency at all. So we'll see if I can help this out. If not, we can use this more like a strawberry sauce, maybe on ice cream or cake or biscuits or something like that. But I really do wanna try and improve the texture. And if not, um, the next time I make it, I might follow a different recipe that's a little more specific just because I didn't realize this is somewhat of a scientific process. So um, anyway. That's where we are with strawberry jam. Tastes delicious, but not quite the consistency I was looking for. Okay, so I think this is gonna work. Um, the original recipe I was using, she just said to simmer it, and I was kind of thrown off by that. I was nervous that if I brought it to a boil, that would be bad, but in fact, I really did need to put my temperature up higher. Right now, I have it on about medium high, and you can see my candy thermometer's in here, and it's coming up to 220 degrees, and oops, sorry, once it hits that temperature, then I'm gonna allow it to continue cooking for another probably five or 10 minutes. Since this was already cooked before, it might thicken up a little bit faster, we'll have to see, but I'm just whisking it, and we'll really be boiling it um, probably for about 10 minutes or so so it gets that nice thick consistency I'm hoping this works <laughs> we'll see oh and also I wanted to show you I'm bringing this water back up to a boil or to a simmer I should say and I put all the jam into the saucepan that's heating again and I'm gonna clean these again just so that they're nice and sterile I'm thinking also that I'm gonna do the sterilization as this is boiling because then when I pull these jars out they'll be hot and I think it's just better if you put the hot liquid into a hot jar I didn't have any problems the first time I did it but better safe than sorry right also I wanted to note too that this color is more like what I was looking for too so that's another kind of indicator that you're on the right track the first jam I made was a little bit too light in color so this is getting nice and dark next time I try it I might not puree all the berries either I might leave some of them in chunks just so it has a little more texture to it. Although this will be nice for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because it'll be easy to spread. Okay, a couple follow-up comments here. This has definitely thickened up a lot, so that's awesome. That's a step in the right direction. The other recipes I was looking at on YouTube did not have pectin, so that might make a difference in how this is cooking up here. And you can see a lot of the liquid has evaporated, so I might only be able to fill one maybe two jars with this, we'll have to see. Okay, now this looks way more like jam. Don't you think, guys? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't make quite as much, but I'd rather have this consistency than that watery consistency. That's gonna be really good. I'm so excited because that worked. I did it. I made strawberry jam and it's a great consistency. It tastes amazing. My kids and I each took a little taste. I added in a couple extra tablespoons of sugar and then I cooked it at a higher temperature for, um, longer, I guess you could say. I mean, it probably would have been a faster process if I had done the higher temperature initially, but um, this turned out great. So what I made initially was good, it just needed to cook longer and hotter, and then we really got that jammy consistency. So I think this weekend, I'm gonna make some homemade biscuits and we can put our fresh strawberry jam on top of those. This recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of buttermilk and I didn't have that in my fridge so I made my own. I took one tablespoon of distilled white vinegar and put it in a glass measuring cup and then I topped that off with 2% milk up to the three quarter cup line. Stir it together and set it aside for about five minutes and it will thicken up a little bit and then you have your homemade buttermilk. Also you could use lemon juice instead of the vinegar too, that would work. So for the dry ingredients, I'm mixing together two cups of all purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, a tablespoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. Then I took six tablespoons of unsalted butter and I popped it in the freezer for about 10 or 20 minutes just to firm up, and then I grated it on my cheese grater. This makes it really easy to incorporate it quickly into your dry ingredients. So I just kind of tossed it around with a fork and then slowly incorporated that buttermilk also with a fork, just sort of gently mixing it until the dough came together. To form the biscuits, I lightly floured my countertop and then put the dough on it and shaped it into a rough rectangle. And then I press it down lightly and fold it in half over itself and then turn it 
45 degrees to the right. And I keep doing that like about four or five times and this is creating layers in the biscuit dough. So all that butter is getting worked in and you'll get these flaky layers inside each of your biscuits. It's a great little technique to make nice, tall, flaky biscuits. Next, I'm flouring the rim of a round glass that I have. And to cut out your biscuits, you just press straight down. You don't wanna twist it or else that'll kind of seal the edges and they won't rise up. Also, of course, you could use a biscuit cutter if you have one. I went a little crazy on my first couple of biscuits. I kind of forgot that this recipe only makes six. Typically, I double it and I didn't that day. So my first two biscuits were kind of extra tall and then the rest were a little bit scrawnier, but it all worked out. They cooked up nicely in the end, but you'll see there's varying heights of my biscuits, but typically you'll cut them at about an inch tall. I just placed these on a baking tray that I lined with a silicone baking mat. You could also use parchment paper and you wanna bake them close together, not spaced out on the baking tray. And then I brushed the tops with a little milk and these baked at 425 degrees for about 15 minutes or until they're lightly golden on top. I'm gonna taste my biscuit with my homemade strawberry jam and some salt and butter. I cannot wait. This is one of my favorite foods in the whole world. Cheers. Mm. Mm, it's so good. These biscuits are a little bit crispy on the outside then super light and fluffy on the inside. The homemade jam is really nice. It's not as sweet as regular jam. You could definitely adjust the sweetness if you wanted to, but um, it tastes so fresh and you can really get that berry flavor. And of course, salted butter kind of takes it over the top. This is so good. Definitely try this biscuit recipe out. It's my favorite, it's fabulous, it's easy, and it just tastes incredible. And you can very easily double it too. This only made about six or seven biscuits, but you could double the recipe and have a whole bunch of these delicious biscuits to eat. I just wanted to share a few final thoughts about this whole experience. Bottom line, I don't think it's that difficult to make strawberry jam from scratch. If you wanna try it out, you just need to really find a good recipe that's a little more specific. This video that I watched on Farmhouse on Boone, it was beautiful, she made it look super simple, and it, it really isn't that hard, but um, I just needed a little more guidance as far as the science behind why I was doing what I was doing, because like I said earlier, I didn't cook it on high enough heat, so the consistency wasn't right at first, but in the end, we did get that delicious strawberry jam. Also, I don't know if it affects the outcome, but you could definitely play around with the sweetness a little bit too. Using honey in a smaller quantity, I think made it not quite as sweet as how I like my jam to be, um, but it still had that nice fresh strawberry flavor, which is great. I'm gonna link a recipe for you in the description box below. It's from the Preppy Kitchen. I love everything that he makes, and he went a little bit more into the science behind how you make this jam. Also, he didn't even use pectin in his, so that would save you an ingredient there too, so you can check that out if you want. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Definitely try out my biscuit recipe. I'll have that in my description box for you below too. And let me know if you try your hand at making homemade strawberry jam. How did it work out? What recipe did you use? I want to know. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Instagram at Answering Recipe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked my strawberry jam and homemade biscuits here today. Thanks so much for joining me here in my kitchen and I'll see you again soon.